Good evening guys, this is Dr. Paul once again. Thank you very much for tuning to this video. Today I want to talk a few minutes about diabetic ketoacidosis. Yesterday we talked about the pathogenesis, signs and symptoms, the laboratory findings. So today I want to end this subject with the, the, with the discussion of the treatment. As always, visit our website at www.usmlvideos.net that is www.usmlvideos.net where you can find hundreds of videos which are important for your examination. Today is, let us talk about uh, the treatment of diabetic ketoacidosis. Diabetic ketoacidosis, you remember yesterday we talked about the pathogenesis. What we saw was there will be a decrease in the intravascular volume. There will be inadequate amounts of insulin in the body. There will be acidotic condition, the diabetic ketoacidosis. So it's an acidotic condition. And also there is potassium depletion. Even though you see a high level of potassium in diabetic ketoacidosis, there is a total uh, total body potassium in low quantities. So it's a spurious hyperkalemia that need to be addressed. So by looking at the pathogenesis itself, you can find out what you are going to treat. So first of all, there is a fluid depletion. That's why it's very important to start fluid administration to these patients. Immediately in the first half hour to one hour, you should concentrate on giving fluids to these patients like one to two liters of normal saline and after some time you change it to half normal saline and give like 500 ml per hour and at one point as you give these fluids you also administer insulin and insulin administration as you know insulin decreases blood sugar levels so as blood sugar level falls at 250 milligrams per deciliter, you should change the IV fluids to D5 half normal saline or D5W because body needs sodium and sorry glucose from that point onwards in order to prevent hypoglycemia. So first of all, treat flu to treat the intravascular volume depletion with the administration of fluids. You start with normal saline, then you change to half normal saline. And when glucose level comes to 250 milligrams per deciliter, you change that fluids to D5W. You are simply giving dextrose in order to prevent hypoglycemia. The second thing is giving insulin. As you know, diabetic ketoacidosis is due to inadequate supplies of insulin in the body. So you need to give these patients insulin. You start with 10 to 20 units of regular insulin as bolus because regular insulin, it acts fast. And then you add like 50 units of regular units to 500 ml of normal saline and you mix that back. And you have to discard the first 50 ml because insulin binds to that uh, IV tubing. So after you discard the initial 50 ml, you, you start the insulin drip and the patient will be getting insulin adequately. And if you don't see adequate response in, in the level of glucose, I mean if the glucose level is not falling down adequately, you should increase the drip rate. So fluid administration number one, secondly insulin and uh, insulin as it goes it reduces blood level and you need to correlate IV fluids and insulin because if you give too much insulin the patient might drip into hypoglycemic condition that's why as I said I I earlier you need to change IV fluids from normal saline to D5 at 250 milligrams per deciliter so third thing is um, potassium as I said earlier, there will be a spurious, I mean fictitious hyperkalemia in these patients, but that's not true condition. And even if you find a normal potassium level, you should give at least 20 milli equivalents per liter of potassium to these patients. And if by chance, if the patient has hypokalemia, then you should give 40 milli equivalents as the first dose. 
and you should always check renal function in these patients because if the kidney is not functioning well this potassium might be harmful so you should wait to evaluate the kidney function and if once you know that the kidney function is good then you should give potassium to this patient so fluid administration insulin potassium and finally bicarbonate as the name indicates diabetic ketoacidosis is in a acidotic condition so you should mix sodium bicarbonate or ample in uh, IV fluids and start administering sodium bicarbonate fluids to these patients there is some controversy in this area but the general rule is to treat potassium uh, sorry with acidotic condition when pH is less than 7 with the sodium bicarbonate so if the pH is less than 7 treat it with the sodium bicarbonate so those four things are important you are going to replete IV volume with uh, normal saline one to two liters in the first hour then you change it to half normal saline and give it like 500 ml per hour and at one point when the glucose level reaches 250 mg per deciliter you change the fluids to D5W secondly insulin drip insulin administration first give 10 to 20 units of regular insulin as a bolus then start insulin drip many hospitals have insulin protocol you can simply follow that protocol and thirdly potassium repletion give like 20 milli equivalents of potassium if the patient is normokalemic if he is hypokalemic give 40 milli equivalents of potassium and finally bicarbonate if pH is less than 7 give sodium bicarbonate add one ampoule to the IV fluids and give it so those are the four important things in the management of diabetic acidosis. I hope this helps you and if you have any questions please forward us and visit us at www.usmlevideos.net and those of you who are taking USMLE clinical skills that is step to see us I recommend this book USMLE Smasher USMLE Smasher is available now and uh, this is just 20 bucks I recommend this book because many students waste thousands of dollars on expensive courses and this book explains uh, very easily the tricks of the trade I recommend this book highly and visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net and uh, buy a copy and read it and I guarantee you will pass thank you and God bless you